Hello and welcome back. As you can see, I have the UMOC 440 taken apart, uh, serial number 480. And I uh, went ahead and did some troubleshooting and tracked down the problem to the fuse assembly. So this puppy was popped. Uh, they've got two 125 amp fuses in parallel. So for a total of 250 amps, I'm not really a fan of the way they parallel the fuses together like that, but uh, I guess it works. That's what the manufacturer did, and that's how I replaced it. Uh, this fuse assembly comes from uh, another UMOC 440, and um, it's my parts one that, you know, it, it died a horrible death, and it supplies parts, and its fuses were not popped, so tested both of them. They're both good, and put it back in. So that since this is a low voltage version, you can see that it's missing one capacitor here. They ended up using um, 250 volt, 560 or 5,600 microfarad caps instead of the typical 400 volt caps that are in here. Maybe they're 450, might be 400 volt caps that they're typically in here and they use up all four. So they Decided to put one less in there. Um, there's probably some other differences on the power supply board. This flyback has probably got some, um, I don't know if the transformer could be wound differently because it's running at a lower voltage. <clears throat> not sure if that's a special component or not, but uh, it generates all the isolated supplies that go down and run. These little black pieces here are the uh, gate drivers, isolated gate drivers. And then you can see them plugging into the gates of the IGBT. And then these little IGBT bricks, well, they're not little, they're, they're pretty big. IGBT bricks are the um, half bridges for all three phases. And I tested all those. Those were fine. We had no shorts into capacitors. That's all fine. So I'm not sure what, what actually caused this thing to uh, have popped the fuses. It could have been the motor. Um, it's got all this gunk in it, but that's um, dielectric compound keep it from uh, corroding, but it's gotten everywhere. But uh, it's possible that the motor that this typically drives has a problem, and i um, hoping, hoping they can check that out so if they plug it in, it doesn't just you know pop the drive again. Um, typically, they're pretty good. The saturation detect on the IGBTs can catch a short circuit and shut it down before anything bad can happen. Um, we've got the current sensors over here. They can read that there's a problem and shut it down, so... It could be just that the fuses were old and they popped. I mean, this is, um, let me see if this has a manufacturing date on it. Typically, they put a little sticker on here, but it appears to be missing. So I'm not sure what year this was made in. Um, the board down here, way down here, says uh, September of 1997, I don't know if you can read that, September of 1997, but that's when the board was manufactured, not necessarily when it was actually uh, made. Oh, this one, this one says 99. So it's at least after uh, 6, 9 of 99. So maybe 2000, 2001, 2002, somewhere in there. So, yeah, it's got a few years on it, but yeah. I don't know, fuses was popped. So we'll go ahead, uh, we've got it on the power supply here. We'll do our same test we did last time. We'll power this up. And hopefully, yep, we got, we got this guy coming up. And we can move it. We are going to have to make a change because uh, if you go back and watch the other video and go into parameters, um, the encoder pulses are currently set to 60, which is apparently what the... Uh, this is supposed to be have an AC21 motor hooked up, and mine's an AC GTX uh, 20 motor. So it actually has 48 encoder pulses per revolution. I'll show you what it does when it's set wrong, because uh, that's kind of useful. Could help diagnose uh, problems. So go ahead and, and fire it up here. So end up with all my stuff on this side, because it's upside down on the heat sink, and it's all kind of scattered around. But we'll go ahead and flip this on. You can see the uh, contactor click in. So if I turn it off, turn it back on. The big thunk, put her in gear and just give it a little bit of throttle because we don't want to accidentally launch the motor. So you can see it 
doesn't quite phase very well, does it? It works, but the slip is kind of, the angles are all screwed up. So what we're going to do is uh, flip that back off. And we're going to go into the parameters here. And we're just going to temporarily, just for, um, you know, for testing purposes, we're going to type in here 29. Uh, is that how we change the parameters? Yeah, enter new value for encoder pulses. And then we want my motor here, test motor has 48. So we'll do that. And you can see now it's set to 48. And I believe we've changed it in RAM only. So we should be able to exit this and verify that encoder still works by moving it. And it looks like it still works. So we're gonna try it again. Uh, we, I don't believe we need to save it to the EEPROM, but we'll double check. We'll go ahead and flip this on again. Put in forward. And then we'll give it just a little bit of throttle, see if this runs a little bit better. Whoa, okay, regen on this thing. We're going to turn off regen. Uh, again, these parameters are not actually the right for this motor, so but it spins a lot better, so... I can hear it, yeah, if I just get it going. So it's able to spin it. I, I'll consider that good. Um, it looks like the uh, the rotation is a little slow on before it starts up, and I could definitely see that because the other motor's expecting. You know, it's probably got a different number of poles or something in it. But um, yeah, I don't know. I'd say that this is working, and uh, all that was wrong was uh, bad fuse. Well, fuse assembly. So I put a new one in. Anyways, uh, yeah, I'll go ahead and shut this down. I believe what I'm going to do is I'll flip this off. And then I'm going to power cycle the drive. And then if I flip this back on, I'm hoping that it goes back to the 60 pulses. Because I never saved it to the EEPROM if we go to parameters. Yeah, see it's set back to 60. So... Yeah, it looks like it's working. Um, I don't expect it to be super smooth since it's, you know, it's programmed for a different motor. It's set up for an AC21 in Delta, and I have an AC GTX20 motor in, in it's currently wired in Delta. But yeah, there's probably enough of a difference that, uh, that, you know, it makes it not look smooth, but I think it's okay. Anyways, uh, thanks for watching. Bye. Oh, well, I guess the last thing I gotta do is clean off all of this um, RTV that they sealed the box with. So they get out the old uh, trusty razor blade and go to town on that. So I gotta do all these surfaces. Surface down there, side surfaces here, and then this whole inside to get all of this stuff off so that we can glue it back together. So yeah, that'll be fun. <laughs> Anyways, uh, yeah, I'll go ahead and do that. Um, put it all back together, but um, it looks like all that was wrong with it was uh, popped fuse. So anyways, um, thanks for watching. Bye.